Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look into some of the Sales Cloud specific objects called Order, Contract, Opportunity, Quote and how it all relates to product. Because when I started learning Salesforce, this was a really confusing topic. But today's video, we're not going to be talking about CPQ. However, I wanted to show you this really awesome blog, which explains you kind of the sales process. Um, and if you're completely beginner to Salesforce, this is a really important topic to understand if you'll be working in an org. Um, and it's good to know all these terminologies so you can better ask better questions in your project. And hopefully this will be helpful to just understand the concept of how all these objects work together. So uh, let's get started. Now this one, this diagram is really nice as in it explains your code to cache process and you'll hear this a lot QTC. QTC is code to cache. This is how an opportunity creation happens and after that how the bill, how, how the money comes back to the business, right? How the cash is flowing into the business there. You create an opportunity, then that's when the start of sale process. By the time the opportunity is created, that's all marketing, right? You have a lead coming in, you convert the lead to contact and accounts and opportunity potentially. This is all marketing. That's how the customer knows your company. Once they are in the system, that's when the QTC begins. Now on the opportunity, you'll create a quote. So quote is basically something that is that has some start date, status, um, relation to the opportunity. So why do we have multiple quotes? Because sometimes the customer may not like one quote. Quote is basically quoting them the pricing of the deal and so on. So you can send multiple quotes to the customer. And finally, the customer will um, accept a deal or the pricing that you're sending them. Once they accept, the handshake happens and then you will send the, the contract or the order gets generated or processed. Once the order is processed, and this is highly simplified, then it gets to the billing system. And obviously the customer now needs to pay and invoice is sent to the customer and the cash is collected. So that is cash. And this I am more familiar up to here and by the time it gets to invoicing uh, that's when you either have NetSuite, um, some other finance systems or even Salesforce billing. But we're not talking about all this Salesforce billing or CPQ today. We are focusing solely on Sales Cloud. Okay, so let's get started. I have a diagram to show you um, and this does not include any of the CPQ objects. Really simple. Now let's start with account. We all know what account is, the customer, and they create an opportunity which is child of account, right? Then um, you have code creation. So code is um, related to opportunity and it's a uh, one-to-many relationship. And this diagram is not meant to depict master detail or one-to-many. This is just to understand the uh, process better. So you have code here and once you create the code, you need to add products to it. So let's say if you are an internet provider, um, you'll basically add whatever it is that you're selling. Now the product is a complete different object. I'm not gonna get too deep into that, but think of product, you have a product catalog, right? Uh, and then you can add products to each code. So if the customer is buying two or three things, they will become two or three lines inside the code. So um, this code lines is master detail to code, um, or one to many to code, and this is junction between code and product. Okay, and we'll see how this object looks like. But um, so like I said, you have code one and code two, let's say the customer liked code two better, then the customer will accept that code and then they'll get an order generated. Now this is where you may want to add some automations to your system so that let's say if the code is accepted, you want the system to auto generate an order and what happens is that order will be like a copy of the code but will have code line and order line. So depending on how many lines were there, you'll have same lines in the order lines. And this is also a junction between order and product. And by the way, when this is happening, when the code gets created, whichever is the primary code can be synced back to opportunity. So you'll also have that opportunity amount updated based on opportunity line. So usually we don't automatically add, or we don't manually add opportunity lines to the opportunity. Every time the code is created, you will sync that code lines back to opportunity line. And there is a simple button to do that in Sales Cloud. So you can automatically sync anything from code line to opportunity line. Really important topic for Sales Cloud exam. Um, and then once the order is activated, it, it just, I, I just wanted to show here that this is also can be uh, automated, right? When order is activated, you can create a contract. Now contract is basically 
um, the agreement between you and the customer that you're going to provide the service. And um, so this is, I pulled this out of a uh, help guy from Salesforce, but basically think of order as multiple transactions of contract. And you can have order um, look up to either account directly or just keep it under code. Uh, contract is always related to account. So when, when you go to the account, you need to be able to see what this account owns or what are the contracts this account has. Because what happens is, um, let's say if you have case support. So if, the intern, if you're an internal service provider, um, if the customer calls you, you need to be able to tell what kind of customer it is. is a premium customer or just basic level customer. B based on that, you'll be able to give them support. So if you don't have that visibility on the account level, it is hard to tell that. So that's why we have contract associated to account. So the subscription record get created when uh, a product is marked as subscription type. So it's more any of the software or SaaS service, anything that uh, requires a subscription from the product customer, uh, that is subscription record. But if you're selling physical goods, um, uh, it can be just a physical software piece or anything like an IT device or whatever it might be then they get created as assets and they will all have their unique asset key. So if you are um, selling, let's say, parts of engines or whatever, that gets added as assets under account. But if anything that is a software related uh, product, they are under the contract as different subscriptions. And this is more CPQ, but good to know. I know that was kind of a lot, but this is basically how a business happens. and usually um, a lot of customers end up using cpq for this because cpq provides a lot of functionality out of the box that makes it all easy and smooth um, but also cpq gives you a lot more so if your business is really simple and if you have a simple use case you may not need cpq so it depends on what your use case really is and what you're trying to do then another thing i missed here is also quote will have quote templates which you can set up in salesforce that is not my biggest strength um, but Templates are pretty easy to set up, um, especially if you don't have any DocuSign or one of those uh, PDF signing uh, packages. All right, so let's get into the Salesforce now and kind of look at what I'm talking about. All right, so before you even start, if you, if you have an org, I highly recommend kind of playing around with this. Otherwise, it will not make more sense if you don't actually try to create some accounts, opportunities, quotes. It will make more sense if you actually play around with this, so I highly recommend doing that. Now, when you start an org fresh, you may not see the code object. So first, you need to actually enable code. So if you go to settings, there's a code settings, and then you can enable codes for the organization. And then, let me see if there's an order settings. Yes, so there's an order settings. And you need to enable orders as well. This may or may not be auto defaulted for your org, so check that out as well if you're not seeing the order object. Okay. Um, and then I'm just gonna show you some example. So I just start with one account, and I may already have an opportunity. And by the way, you will also need to add related lists because some uh, it doesn't always have related list added, especially for the order and contract objects. So here I just, let's say, I have an opportunity, okay? This opportunity seems to already have products here, but you know what? I wanted to start from scratch and create a quote. So I'm gonna do exactly that. So I already have two quotes here and you can see there's a syncing option. I'm gonna create a new one. Let's call it test quote. So imagine that my customer did not like any of those quotes that I sent um, and starts with draft. The syncing is not checkable, but I will show how to do that. And then I'm just going to save it. All this feels kind of auto populate from account. So let's just save that. And now I have, should have another quote here. Let's go to that quote. And immediately you are seeing it already has two quote lines even though I didn't add them. There was quote, um, opportunity had those lines. So it will auto populate that because it's auto syncing it. But then I wanted to add more products to it. So let's add one more product. Just gonna pick something else here. 
quantity of two, save that. So now we have three line items, two are pulled from opportunity and the, the third one here. Um, now what I want to do is make this the primary code and also sync this. Um, so there is a button on code which will call start sync. So let's click on that. And there's um, documentation on this as well, which I'll share the link with, um, on what are the gotchas with the syncing. Basically, you need to make sure that the products are active, um, currency is active, and so on. Okay, so we have synced that. Now let's go to the opportunity and take a look on how that looks like now. So see, we just added this installation portable, which wasn't there before, and now it's synced to um, the opportunity from Coat. Okay, so let's go back. To that quote. So from here, if I had set up the uh, PDFs, this is where it would appear. There is a code template object that I need to set up. I'm not going to get into that in this video, but you can set that up and send it out to a customer. Imagine that we did all that, and basically now my code is needs review. So in a in a general business use case, I'll just explain what happens, right? Um, let's say if I if I give discount to the customers, out of hundred thousand, I, I gave them like twenty percent discount because I know them, or maybe they are a regular customer. So you can set up certain approval process right here. So let's say um, I wanted to kind of get this code to somebody else who is my boss, maybe uh, to make sure that the discount is right. Sometimes. You don't want sales rep to kind of discounting anyone however they feel like so if i discounted more than 50 percent for example i could auto set, send this code for approval to somebody else who is my boss and their boss and so on and and then what happens it gets approved then only it gets sent out to customer and the customer signs and reviews it and then finally it goes to accepted or denied let's assume that all happened in the background and we'll just send the status to um, accepted now this is where you can have an automation to auto create the order. Right now I don't have that, but let's pretend that on status accepted an order was created. I'm just gonna create that order here manually. I believe CPQ does that by default. Um, and I already had a contract with that customer, so I just populated that. Otherwise you need to create a contract. Um, and let's say order start date is today it's in draft currently and then now here's a lot of manual process that cpq kind of overrides and you don't have to do all this manually now i have to add the product here as well um, all the products from the code line so and you can always write a flow to do that so you can copy all the code lines to uh, uh, product lines or order products basically let's pretend that I did all that and it just created these one, one, and it should be really simple flow that you can write to copy those code lines over to the order line. So now we have order lines here. And then what I'm gonna do is activate this order. And the order activation, you can set a um, another automation to activate the contract. The contract is active. And also, at this point, you can send this um, deal to a different system. Let's say if you have a different billing system or maybe um, if you are shipping, right? Um, people who are packaging the product and sending it out, if it's like a um, physical product, then you may need to notify people who are needs to ship this out. So this is where you probably want to do that and send a status to those people or it's a different system however you want to integrate it to make sure that they get this order so they know, okay, I need to send these many products to this customer and this will have all the other information like the billing address and shipping address as well. So this is now completed. Um, that's the contract. I didn't show you the creation of contract, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, you create a contract under account. So now if I go to the account, I should have contract, and ideally, you probably won't have both under here. Um, you, you, you'll either do contract-based or order-based. So both don't need to be there. If I have a contract, that's perfectly fine. And the order can just stay under the coat 
and the order will have connection to the coat. I don't have that field on the layout. And another thing about uh, setting this up is make sure that when I was setting this up, you want to make sure, let me go to the objects, you have all the page layouts figured out. So like on the order object, to be able to show the order um, related list on quote, you want to make sure that this quote field on order uh, is visible. If this is marked as not visible, then you'll not see that related list, even though you add it to the related list. So this is something you need to do. If it's a fresh org, so make it visible. Um, and then after making it visible, go to quote layout and add order related list here. So I have order related list and I have quote, order, quote line items and etc. So this was a really quick overview of all these different objects, which always confused me. So my recommendation is definitely trying it out in your org and reading this documentation. I will share this link as well. Um, this is mostly focusing on sales cloud and not CPQ. If you need to learn more about CPQ, I'd recommend going to the Trailhead um, and they have uh, some projects that you can do on Trailmix um, as well as install the package. You obviously need the package installed in your 